Hello to strategy game lovers around the globe. This is Strategy Gaming Dojo, and today we are going to continue on with our Let's Play of War in the Pacific. And we are currently in turn seven. Uh, we are now having task forces arrive where they should arrive. Uh, we've got ships all around the world. Uh, we've got uh, some things coming into Batavia, as you see here, and we are setting up Java right now. Uh, each time, each turn, I'm trying to focus on a different area. Uh, this time we're looking at Java. Incredibly important, of course, because as the Japanese continue to advance down the Malay Peninsula, they will eventually get to Singapore. Uh, they will then, you know, we'll see what happens to our Australian troops here that we are worried about. Uh, they will then probably go after Palembang if they're smart, and generally computers are. Uh, and then Batavia would be next. So Batavia, Sorbaya. Now over here to our right, or to the east, we have this unguarded Japanese task force. Now the more I've thought about that, I thought it was a little gamey to go after that uh, so strongly. Uh, the reason is, is hey, we're playing the AI. David, what's going on? Good to see you, David. Um, we're playing the AI. If I was playing a human player and they had a completely unescorted task force out here, we would just go try to blast it into smithereens. You know, it's the AI. Let's try to keep the game fun, keep it, you know, halfway competitive. Uh, they really should not be sailing this task force out here. Now, the reason we know what's in it, we can hover over it here, and we say ship sighted one moving east, which is kind of strange. It looks like it's moving. It, it has looked like it's moving west, uh, but it may just be avoiding what we've got out here. Uh, but we did see we actually engaged with this task force, this Japanese task force, with our uh, destroyer out here, the Bulmer. And we did see that they had uh, some troop transports, some cargo ships, and again, completely unguarded as far as we know. But I'm not going to go send the whole cavalry after them uh, just to keep things a little more fun. Uh, but the Japanese are pressuring us down here, of course, as they will do on the island of Mindanao. They have landed at Davao or Davao, potentially, uh, and they will be moving up here to Cagayan. Uh, and take the whole southern island, as well as here at Legaspi. They have landed, they have actually taken the base of Legaspi, and we are in full retreat back north here on the island of Luzon. Unfortunately, we're probably not going to get very far as the Japanese come south. Hey, what's up, Bayard? Good to see you. I got to have my, uh, I've got to have my uh, rear admiral here. Agreed, agreed, Davao, yes, you can uh, generally, uh, and this is very true, you know, you've got some sub ac activity here as they come out, you know, as they land at Davao, then you know that troop transports are going to be coming out of here. How well guarded or unguarded they might be is the question, uh, but regardless, it doesn't really matter if we have subs. We do have a couple of subs in the area here, uh, and so, you know, uh, we'll see. I'm not going to get crazy with it uh, by sending subs here. Again, I like to give the AI a little bit of a chance. You know, the AI is very good in this game, and if Andy Max around somewhere, you know, kudos to him. I don't even know how in the heck you would program an AI uh, to this extent. It does a nice job, especially if you download his files. Uh, he's got like 16 files that uh, give gives the AI different options so the AI doesn't kind of follow the same path every time. Uh, sometimes it'll send the main task force uh, directly to Java or sometimes it'll go straight down to Port Moresby. You know, it does different things so you don't know exactly what it might do. Now we have potentially spotted the main Japanese task force uh, as Bayard uh, very uh, correctly pointed out up here, uh, where is that sub? It's, ah, there it is. Uh, we think we've seen the main Japanese task force somewhere out here uh, near this sub. Now, one thing, uh, as I was going around the map, uh, because I spent about uh, eh, a couple of hours before we jumped on here. Hey, P. Warner, what's going on? We got the crew. All right, we've got the crew. Uh, we have a full task force here on board today. Um, one thing I, I noticed when I was 
moving around here and I was like, eh, what's going on? Because you remember when we resolved turn six, we had all of our destroyers out here. It looked like, you know, the queen bee, uh, we, had, we had shaken the nest here and, and they had just swarmed out. And I was like, where are all these damn destroyers? I don't see them. Well, <laughs> so I went and clicked on this. And I said, oh, well, we're all in the same hex, which, which does not seem very efficient. Now, the reason that is, is when they all came out of base, I had them all set on max react of three, which generally would be, you know, kind of how you, you do your ASW. But these destroyers are all so uh, close together they're going to be, and they, they are fast enough that if they are all on Max React 3, this happens. And this is, they there was a sub spotted here, and they all just came to this hex. Um, you know, they're, they're out here just floating around with each other. Uh, it looks like a Saturday out on the lake drinking beer out here. Uh, so what I did is I dialed these back to Max React 2, hoping because this this is actually not only just not efficient it's not um good because you know if you have all of your asw in one hex here you're not covering other places right and so let's just say now this may be a ghost reading here but let's just say this sub actually is here we have things coming into pearl harbor including a carrier uh the saratoga that's coming in and we've got no ASW support at all around here because everybody's in this one hex. So I have dialed that back to a two. If after this turn, turn seven, they're still all very congregated uh, because we do have patrol zones going on all of these. But when you set the react, when something gets spotted, they all flood to there. And, uh, no, you know, I probably shouldn't say the word flood in relation to naval action, uh, but you know, we've got to make sure that they're not all going to just congregate at the same hex. Now, that's great if somehow you've spotted, you know, a, a wolf pack of Japanese subs, but that's not really how the Japanese operate their sub fleet. It, this is going to most likely be one at most two, so we don't want all of our ASW there. Um, yeah, P. Warner, well, we're trying our best with the AI, right? You know, it still does some some wonky things, but again, holy smokes, they, you know, to program this thing, it, I'm surprised it even operates. Uh, I think that's probably the biggest uh, obstacle to them ever putting out another war in um, the Pacific is just the sheer scope and size of what the AI has to accomplish. Um so, okay, so those were the destroyer, just kind of the destroyer comments I want to mention. We do have the Saratoga coming in here. Uh, I do think maybe, maybe, maybe I should slow this down. A lot of destroyers along with. I did send out these uh, several destroyers from Pearl Harbor and some support ships here. Uh, you know, question whether I should have sent... Hey, Stanley, what's going on? Question whether I should have sent the uh, cruisers out, because ultimately, what are they going to do? I mean, the reason you have cruisers with uh, your carriers is to provide more AA support. Um, we don't really need that here. And all they're going to do is attract even more subs, and they have, you know, no ASW. So really, that was kind of a wasted move, but you know, sometimes you do things and then say, eh, why the hell did I do that? Uh, and I'm not really sure why I put those cruisers in there, but they're in there now, and that is one beast of a task force. So let's jump over to Java once again. And we had just made it down to uh, the port of Batavia. And we, where I was on the spreadsheet is at 2839 on the row number. And I was at this AO TAN 2, so an Euler TAN 2 that we had sent up to Palembang. And we were obviously sending this up here to try to grab some fuel. Now let's see if we can find this sucker the old fashioned way by just clicking through. But we probably won't. No, I was hoping that was it, but that's the iris. Uh, we have just got a ton of, uh, no pun intended, a ton of ships here at Palembang trying to get fuel. This is not a very big port. 
you know, it has been built up into a four. It was naturally a one. You know, that is not a very big port to have this many task forces in there trying to get fuel. So we're going to have to go look for this sucker. Uh, the AO Tan 2. We'll just sort by name. That should be very close to the top. Assuming it goes by normal alphabetical order, and of course it does not. Oh, goodness. L M N O. Ah, interesting. Okay, let's take off all ships. Let's go to just the AOs. There we are. AO Tan 2, it's in Task Force 362. And okay, we've already loaded this up. We've already done what we uh, what the initial orders were, which was to send this to Palombang. Uh, this is a very small oiler at 1550 capacity. Some of those oilers get up to 12,000, 13,000 in capacity. So this is a tiny one. You know, it is what it is. That's why we're doing what we're doing with it, which is running it to Billiton out here. This is where we're trying to set up our float plane base. Uh, we'll see if I can pull that off. Um, yeah, yeah, P. Warner, they are, you know, they're, they're floating gas tanks, these, uh, these AOs, the TANs. Uh, but th it's a very small one. If that's what you're referring to, it is a tiny one here, uh, a 1550, the TANs. Uh, very small capacity, but it's going where it should go. It's then going to go back to Palombang. I actually would prefer it to come down this way as opposed to whoop, because they might get into some Japanese bomber range. Uh, but I'm going to keep this green. We'll come back and look at it. And when I send it back, or when it's going to be going back to Palombang, when it's unloaded, I'll probably give it orders to try to come this way. Uh, I just like to, to go that way. Now we have the AS Janssens here at Batavia. This is a submarine tender. Uh, I'm bringing most of the submarines all back to Swerbaya. I guess it's night. Does Swerbaya have an AS in port? Let's go check that out. We've got a lot of stuff in port. It does have an AS here. Okay, so that's good. And it is loaded up. And we have some Gosh, we've got some submarines here. we got a lot of work to do at Swerbaya uh, because these guys are not just in here repairing. They actually don't have orders. So we need to get them out and uh, on the float. Uh, so anyway, we'll deal with that when we get down to Swerbaya. I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to have to look when we get down there why we've got so much. So we'll keep this Janssen's here at Batavia on the off chance that the Japanese come this way, pressure us, and we have to start bringing uh, Dutch subs back to Batavia. Yeah. Will that happen? Uh, maybe. You never know. Uh, the next thing we've got here is we've got a support task force that uh, went out to Sibiro, Sibiro, Uh Sounds like a kind of champagne, uh, to be honest. Uh, okay, so we've got this group out here. There it is, the AVP Morel. It's a support uh, and we're just going to leave it here again. This is another float plane support, as I named it, float plane Sibiret. Uh I'm going to quit saying that because I know I'm not saying it right. Uh, that looks good. Uh, that's right where we want to be. That's where we need to be. I will keep it green just because something like that, you know, you just never, you kind of got to look at this stuff every turn. Uh, when the Japanese take Kuala Lumpur, uh, it's definitely going to be in bombing range. Uh, that kind of seems like the thing they may they may bomb if they just get completely tired of bombing Singapore or Padang. So we will keep an eye on that. Um, we sent the Orion, which is another AVP, down to Swerbaya. And let's go. Ch oh, that's the Orion. There we go. Okay, great. Well, it doesn't currently have orders. It's a transport. It's in a transport task force here where we've got the Van Kloon. Uh, this has kind of subpar capacity. It does have a really good endurance. Question, you know, whether we should send this Van Kloon somewhere else. Uh, the reason we have it holding here, you know, it's possible we could make a little dash over here to Bali Papan. 
uh, Tarakin we're going to leave as is. I think I'm going to leave both of these bases. You can see we've got a lot of stuff going on at Tarakin. A lot of these are ships that were up at Singapore or were over in the Philippines, and now I've got them loading up. I also have a bunch of these. I was doing this um, before I started the stream here. Um, I was taking these American task forces because these are, you know, your crappiest little cargo ships. They're one point cargo ships and I'm running them back up here to the Philippines with supply whatever I can get in there uh, question whether they're even gonna make it but if they do we can hold on a little bit longer in the Philippines uh, because generally you're gonna run out of supply before you run out of men uh, in the initial phases you know then eventually the Japanese wear you down but a big part of that is just running out of supply because there's no way to good way to supply the Philippines when you've got all of this Japanese, you know, air power. Now, their air power's down here. This is that uh, light carrier, I believe. And then what do we have up here? Destroyers and cruisers, we think. Oh. Oh. Wow. I see a lot of CVs there. Um, this could also be a light carrier force. Uh, the Japanese have several. Um, hmm, interesting. You know, this just must have popped up this last turn. Either either that or surely I would have noticed that. My goodness. Uh, or this has been miscited, potentially, because, uh, you know, we knew that they were landing on Legaspi. I just wonder if this is part of this Legaspi, um, uh, landing force because now we don't see the task forces here obviously and they would have moved southeast out of here i guess i didn't realize uh i knew that we had been bombed there but i actually thought it was coming out of this task force uh interesting okay well we'll keep our eye on that i mean we don't think it's the main japanese task force i don't even think this is where they would go uh they've kind of got to go back to japan to rearm but that's interesting okay hey yeah, Bayard, that's what I'm thinking, too. It's that transport task force, but, you know, it's very odd for it to say that we've we've cited three carriers. Uh, just very odd. Um, but I do believe that that probably is the transport task force, and this is just a light carrier force out here uh, that they sent in support. I guess we'll see. Uh, there's not a whole lot we could do. I, you know, in some respects... Uh, we'll just wait for more information. There's not a whole lot we could do about it right now. Uh, all, all of our carriers are going to be sitting at Pearl Harbor for the foreseeable future. Uh, we will, I was looking, we will be getting the Yorktown. Uh, let's go up here for just one second because I was looking at ship availability and uh, usually I always do, just do this by uh, ETA. And so I would kind of forgotten, we do get the Yorktown in 16 days at San Diego. So that'll float out of there before the end of December. Uh, and we will have four carriers. Now, if you look down our carriers here uh, and what we get, you know, we get the Yorktown in 16 days. We get the Hornet in 87 days. Okay, so in about three months. Uh, so we're talking kind of near the end of February, maybe. Uh, start of March, I guess. Then we get the Wasp in June. And then look at this. We, you know, just historically, this is interesting. The U.S. did not crank out in this. Uh, hold on. The, yeah, I was just looking at the Essex for a minute. The U.S. did not crank out another carrier until the following May. So almost for a year, we do not get a new carrier. Um Oh, Stanley, I'm playing this standard. I, I don't have the Andy Max scripts on. The reason being is, is you know, I've kind of, I was doing this as a let's play tutorial kind of thing, and I just wanted to make sure the game was stable, ran correctly. Not that I've ever had a problem with one of his scripts, and uh, as soon as this one's over, in like 2025, 20, I'll probably run another let's play, and we'll, we'll use his scripts in that one. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure um, so anyway, the point being is, yeah, we get to Yorktown and then we have you know, a pretty big delay. Now we do get, uh, you know, some light CV stuff. 
Uh, and then you see here, oh, wait a minute. We do get, well, these are British, right? We get the, yeah, so it's sorted. It, it gives us the British ones down here, which we will be getting um, the Indomitable in 34 days at Aden. Now, the Indomitable has these Hurricanes, Albacores, Full Mars. Yeah, it's that British setup, right? Uh, it just, they didn't like fighters. Uh, what do we, what's the formidable? The same. It's that British sub. The illustrious class, I do believe. Yeah. All that. Very interesting to look through this. Anyway, you know, how in the world did I get off on this subtopic? I guess that it's because we were talking about the fact we're just not quite sure what that British, or <laughs> that British, this Japanese task force is made of. Uh, and so that'll be interesting. Uh, to see play out. Back to Batavia before I lose my train of thought again. Uh, I, you know, that's the thing with this game. You know, I love the history of it. I love to look at the different ships. You just can go down rabbit holes that you never recover from. Um, the CM Regal, we do have out here mines down at Billiton here. That's what the little symbol is here. And if you're ever wondering where your mine layers are, it puts that same little symbol over the ship if it's got a mine layer in it. Uh, so the Regal should be out here, or it has already departed, okay? So it has laid down its mines. Is this the Regal? No, these are, uh, sorry, those are obviously surface ships. All right, well, we're going to have to go look for it here. There it is. Okay, uh, so this should load back up with mines. Um, here at Batavia. And then we'll see what we're going to do with it from there. So that was mine layers. And then we had uh, a tanker task force that went over to, or went up to Palombang. So I'm going to leave the uh, mine layer green. Uh, let's go look at Palombang and look for the Tideman. Uh, yeah, let's look for the Tideman up in Palombang. It should be up here by now. Gosh, we just have so many damn ships up here. It's going to take a while. The Tideman. Where is it? Of course, I'm going to have to now go search for it, taking me double the time. Yeah, wow. Couldn't find it. Um, all right. Well, the Tideman is a PC. So we'll go look for the PCs. I'll go back to all ships. Oh, actually, let's look for something else in this. It's in uh, Tanker Task Force number 19, if we can find it. And I do not see it. Oh, I see it. It's with that AO tan. Uh, that is up there with the AO tan, so I must have gone by it. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. That's the one that's coming out to Billiton. There we go. Gosh, there it is, the Tideman. Well, we're going to keep that one green. Uh, then we have a bunch of ships that, or I say a bunch, a couple at least, that uh, are tankers that we sent out to Perth. So Tanker Task Force 11 out of Batavia that should be on their way down here to Perth. That is not them. That is not them. Is this them? No, these are some AKs. Okay, we'll go look for the actual ship. The Anastasia is the first one. And so we'll just go look for tankers and look for the Anastasia. A lot of, tank lot of tankers. Uh, hmm. Now, why am I not seeing it? Interesting. Uh, let's look for the Frank Cole. All right. Tankers. The Frank Cole. It's like everything that could be... Oh, I said... <laughs> my gosh, guys. There we go. Now let's turn that green. All right. Uh, back with you there. I was I had turned tankers off, and I was like, hey, why can't I find this thing? Uh, there we go. Here it is. This tanker task force. It's the Anastasia and the Frank Cole. All right. Uh, they are completely full. 5190 each, headed to Perth. Uh, we've, we've then also set their home to Swarbaya, so they will be coming back there. So they're headed to Perth. Very shortly here, we will be getting an absolute mob of ships here at Perth. Hey, what's up, Keith? How you doing? Um, 
Yeah, Stanley, it is very easy to get sidetracked. I, I give you a master class in that uh, every other day. Uh, I just, that's part of the reason I love this game, though. You know, I'll sit there for an hour and then I'll go over to uh, Wikipedia and look up each of the carriers and what their deal was and what their history was. Next thing you know, I'm like, oh, gosh, I guess I didn't really play the game at all. Um, yeah, so the Anastasia and the Frank Cole, okay, 5190. They're not the best tankers in the world, but they uh, are fully loaded and headed to Perth, where we will have a traffic jam very shortly down in Perth. So those are good. They are green. We're going to have to keep them green. Once they get to Sorbaya, we might put them on some kind of continuous supply to Perth, uh, but I don't want to do that yet. Um, then we have the Bellington, the Bintang. We have a, a very large task force that is headed to... Uh, they are taking fuel to Perth, and I think it's that task force that I saw earlier, uh, where I had four cargo ships. Nope, that's the Anastasia and the Frankel. It's potentially this one. It is this one. Uh, so all of these guys are going in the right place. I like that. Uh, then we have another task force that's up at, that we sent up to Palembang. We already looked at that. And so that's all good. Palembang. Sorry, just filling in the spreadsheet here. Now we're keeping all those green. They will need further orders. Um, then we have the Wang Pu. That's very juvenile of me to laugh at the name Wang Pu. Uh, everybody Wang Chung tonight. Uh, let's go up to Singapore. Now, this is a transport that we had sent up to Singapore. And have they, they did make it. Okay. This is actually a cargo ship, but it's part of a transport task force. Uh, that's right. This is part of that group with the Mauritius. Now, the Japanese have tried to come over the top of this task force. And part of the reason we have the Mauritius here is for that 280 anti-air. Uh, we also have some cap, obviously, out of Singapore. Although I was looking at Singapore before the episode, and I was like, we really just don't have a lot of cap there. Uh, Azutek, hey, how you doing, man? Um, Okay, good good reminder. There was something I needed to do with that Artie Brigade in Swerbaya. That's right. We need to take them down uh, because when we were looking at Batavia earlier with the LCUs, we had uh, taken that Artie Battalion down here, and then they need to come out and head down uh, down here to some Lockie. Um, and one of the... Uh, one of the regular commenters uh, on the videos, uh, Sean, he said, "Hey man, I've already got my I've already got my stuff down here at some Lockie. You're running a little bit behind." And yes, I am. I am running behind with some of these. Uh, <laughs> that's right, Stanley. A couple of pints later, my friend. Um, so yes, we do need to when we get to Sorbaya, we'll send that Artie battalion down to some Lockie or put them on a transport and get them down there. Uh, where the heck? Or what the heck? Oh, yes, Singapore. Uh, so what have we got going on on this transport? Uh, we got a lot going on. This is all the stuff that we finally decided we are actually going to get out of Singapore. Uh, we've got a lot of kind of a mishmash, actually, of different British units that we're taking out of there. Uh, I've got them going to Batavia right now. Once I get them safely to Batavia, then we're going to have to kind of sort them and figure out what we want to do with each one. Uh, right now, I'm just trying to get them the heck out of there. Uh, as a matter of fact, yeah, we do have them on full speed. Uh, so hopefully, uh, I should turn on my, there we go. I'm going to say I should turn on my task force distance mover here. Uh, so one one phase the next phase should be all the way, you know, approximately, they may slow down through here, approximately right in here after turn seven, uh, and then into Batavia by turn eight. So let's hope that the Mauritius can keep that Japanese Air Force at bay. So those guys are good. They're on their way. Then we have the guys out at Billiton. We have a cargo task force out to Sibiret. Uh, we already talked about that. Uh, now the Cocos Islands. Let's go look at the Cocos. wonder what the Cocos Islands are like. They're kind of just out here, out in the Indian Ocean. 
uh, probably beautiful, I would imagine, or are they smaller, just like a little volcanic island? I don't know. Maybe one of uh, maybe one of you guys knows. Uh, or Christmas Island number ten, right? Uh, or maybe IO, if, if you prefer. Uh, what's going on out of the Cocos? Uh, we've got the Lamatang out here. Okay, it is unloading supply. All right. Uh, have these guys? Nope, they have not gotten there yet. These are two different, just uh, spot. Now we've got the ISIS coming out here. Oh, this is, um, yeah, okay. This is a group we have coming out here that's eventually going to Darwin. That's why I sent the DD with it, the destroyer, uh, because I want to get more destroyer coverage down at Darwin. And another one, Jupiter. Now, the Jupiter we're just going to leave hanging out here, I think. Probably a decent place for it to be. Now, we may put it back. Actually, let's look at the anti-sub. Yeah, we don't want to waste that. So this is the groups that we tried to get out. And I said, let's just send them the, to the Cocos. Uh, once they get here, now remember, we've got this one destroyer task force here that's running this um, anti-sub through the strait. We may take that other eight or maybe both of them. We maybe even break this one off. Is the Jupiter an eight? Yeah, that's that's good anti-sub stuff right there. Uh, we may take one and put it here, or we may take it and put it down here at Horn Island or somewhere around Port Moresby and try to really dissuade the Japanese from coming. To, we may even put them together in a task force and send them down here to Horn Island. We will decide that after the next turn, when they both get to the Cocos, uh, we may put them together and send them down to Horn Island. That's really good anti-sub stuff to have. And the Japanese love to run subs down through that Torres Strait. Uh, and so we'll take a look at that next turn. Uh, then we have some people going to Christmas, to Cocos, to Exmouth. Uh, we, I did see that a little bit ago, the one going to Exmouth. Uh, great Sibaret. Uh, Christmas Island, I.O., uh, all of those looking good, looking good. I think we have that as a continuous supply out there just so they get. And then we have all of the transports going to Singapore. Good, got that. Uh, then we have a transport going out to Cape Town. Now, Cape Town is not a place we've really looked at at all this turn. Uh, why don't we go take a peek? Now, this is where I've made that horrific mistake of trying to put the AA on this transport task force it didn't work out it caused all kinds of uh, problems at central command uh not really it's it's not that big of a deal we're about to get some cargo ship <laughs> i said some we're about to get some cargo ships out here at uh, cape town as you can see we'll take a couple of those cargo ships and load the aa units on there uh of course they're almost they're all cargo really now you still have to have a transport along the way but there is no troop load cost um, and so we're going to load that mainly on, uh, on cargo ships and, you know, do it that way. But as you can see next, uh, within the next couple of turns here, how far away is, oh, well, that's a long, long part time in the penalty box. This one will not get there for 14 days. This one, 15, 16. So even on the, even though on the map, they look close, they are truly in the penalty box, 13 days. 15, oh, okay, so we still have some time. Shit, that makes me kind of want to put those AAs on those transports now. <sighs> Should we try this again? You guys messed me up last time that we tried to do these transports. Um, uh, I'll come back and do that. We'll, we'll focus on the off-map bases maybe next turn. Uh, although most of this is not getting here for like two weeks, so question whether that even makes sense. Uh, but we're going to go back to Batavia before I go down that road and spend the rest of the episode trying to set up that task force, that transport task force. Um, so I think we're through almost all of the ships in Batavia, or that started in Batavia. Let's put it that way. Uh, we'll turn those green. And then we have Christmas Island is next. So we're out of Batavia now. We've taken care of all the stuff there. Christmas Island. I guess someone just subscribed. Boy, that scared the living bejesus out of me. I don't know if you guys, if that was that loud for you guys, but 
<laughs> Thank you to whoever subscribed. It almost made me wet myself. Um, <laughs> that is too. That is very loud. I'm gonna have to turn that down a little bit. All right. So Christmas Island, we've got the base and the resources out there. Obviously, those aren't moving. We will turn them red. That's fine. Um, oh, okay. So now we're gonna go look at the the Deroiter. The so the light cruiser Deroiter, the light cruiser Java, and the light cruiser Trump. Uh, now in the spreadsheet. This has us looking at the air units on each of them, uh, but let's go kind of think about these Dutch surface ships here, if I can find them. May have to go search for them. I thought that they were at Batavia, but do I have do I have one up at Oosthaven? Maybe. No. Okay. Well, let's just go look for it. Um, what did I say? The Deroiter. Okay, let's get back to all ships here, uh, and we will go look for cruisers, and let's go look for the Deroiter. That sounds like a very Dutch name, Deroiter. If I can remember how you uh, do... Oh, shit, did I just do this again? I hate when I do that. Let's turn off all ships and turn on the cruisers. Jiminy Christmas. There we go. Uh, Task Force 412. Here is the Deroiter. Well, it was sitting here at Batavia. I must have just clicked right over it. Uh, Deroiter, it's got two destroyers with it. The Bankert, which, you know, is a two. That's not doing us a whole lot of good. The Wit De Wit, uh, that's also a two. Okay. The Deroiter, what has it got? You know, eh. Not the best light cruiser you're ever going to see in the world with only a 140 AA. It wants us to uh, set up the uh, planes here, but we have already done that. They're training, naval search, 7,000 in altitude, no maximum range. That all looks good. Uh, the bigger question is, what exactly are we kind of doing with these surface ships? Well, to be honest with you, we're kind of hiding, I think. I mean... These Dutch surface ships are not going to be able to take on a decent Japanese task force, surface task force. And so, you know, anything that we would, any operations that we would take up right here would come immediately under Japanese air pressure. Uh, we would kind of be sacrificing them here. Uh, you know, like, what's the point of sending them up here? Now, we do have some Japanese naval action here and here, but I, you know, with all of the Japanese air power that they're going to have in this region, it's essentially suicide to send them up there. And so they're kind of just going to sit here for now, um, the, the Dutch capital ships. Now, as we come under more pressure and more pressure, we maybe even have to pull them all the way back you know, and, and bring them down here, maybe even park them at Darwin. Uh, but we essentially have them hiding at this point. Uh, so hide they will. Uh, and we will turn that green. Now we also need to look for the Tromp. And now that I have this sorted properly, we can easily go find the Tromp. And it is at Sorbaya, no surprise there. It uh, is all by itself. What other surface ships do we have here? Do we have anything else? Let's search this out. Got those subs. That bugs me. That uh, I think these guys were getting repaired, though, so maybe it shouldn't uh, bug me that much. Uh, okay, we don't have any other Dutch surface uh, warriors here. No destroyers, no cruisers. Uh, it's just kind of the Trump all on its own. Let's make sure that its planes are set up correctly. Uh, or I say its planes. It's just got one float plane out here, and it is training naval search. Excellent. Uh, no surprise there. That's uh, That's been the order since day one. The other one would be the Java. All right, let's go look for the Java. Okay, figure out where the Java is. And again, it is Batavia. I guess I just flipped right over the top of those. So the Java also has two destroyers with it. They are these kind of stock Dutch, uh, did I just say cruisers? Has the two destroyers with it. These stock uh, Dutch destroyers, they you know they have two, gives it a little escort for the cruiser, so they hopefully don't get taken out by a sub. But again, they're just hiding. They're just hiding. There's nothing for them to do. Uh, I'm going to set the planes to yellow for training, 
and let's go down uh, the cocos. We just looked at the cocos. We'll turn the base itself red. Um, Den Den Pasar. Okay, Den Pasar. Let's go look at Den Pasar. Make sure I can locate it. Oh yes, okay. So it's down here all on it on its lonesome here on this little island. Now of course these pathways through here are very important uh, to get for us to get our shipping out, especially from uh, Bali Papan, uh, Tarakan. I've got them all you know cutting through here basically before they go to Darwin. That's an abundance of caution. You don't you know this early on, you're probably all right sailing them down this way in front of Java. Uh, but or the Java chain of islands here, uh, I'm you know running them to the backside and then down to Darwin again. Abundance of caution. Uh, and so what do we have going on at Denpasar? We're building forts. We've got the base force with replacements on. They are delayed because we have not turned on any of the Dutch replacements. Uh, you know they don't doesn't look like they need too much in a base force here. They do aviation support and regular support. They could use more of that. Now, are we even building up this? Uh, no, we're just building the fortifications. It does have an okay airfield capacity. They don't really need it. They're kind of within range of Swarbaya here. Uh, so anyway, that's all good. That looks fine. Those can be orange. We're doing what we're supposed to be doing there. Uh, and we're not going to be moving them unless something gets really crazy. All right, on we go to, oh my goodness, Joke, Joke Jakarta. Did I say that correctly? Uh, I'm doing pretty well today, I think, with the pronunciations. Uh, Joke Jakarta. Uh, David says, what, uh, my game is very clear. I'm glad you're saying that and asking what resolution I'm using. Uh, I'm glad you're asking that, David, because you, if you go back and look at the very first episode of the series, maybe you were on the channel at that point. Um, it's black, essentially. You can't see anything. It looked like it was the dead of night uh, on the screen. And I went in and tried to figure out with Twitch and YouTube both, like the the, ba the best settings I could find. Now, I use Streamlabs OBS, which I think is a great program, and you can stream to multiple platforms, but I had to go through YouTube channels and, and figure out exactly the best settings, uh, but it should be streaming at 1080p, uh, but I do turn the quality up to 100. Um, if you are familiar at all with Streamlabs, uh, it's up to 100. Um, I think I'm going to dial that back to 80, I have been told that will not hurt the uh, quality of the video that you're seeing, uh, but it may help. Now, we've had a couple of issues, right? Now, that could be Spectrum Cable. I think it probably is, but it could also be because I'm loading up the pipe, uh, you know, by turning the quality up to 100 on Streamlabs OBS. Uh, I've been told that 80 is fine, and you'll see the same, uh, but it, it will you know, be pumping out a little bit less for the cable or, you know, for the pipe to hold the internet, the interwebs, um, the PX and the PY in the program. Well, you know what? Let me go look. I'll tell you. Not sure that it comes up there. Tell you what, I'll look and I'll tell you next time, David. Um, I think, oh, I know, I know where to find that, actually. I do believe I'll do this very quickly, I hope. Um, settings. Yes, video. Uh, my scaled resolution is 1920 by 1080. That's, uh, that's what it is showing you. Hopefully, I'm telling you what you were asking. <laughs> um, yeah, let's get out of that. Okay, we're back. Um, Let's see, where was I? Where was I? Uh, here we go. Uh, we were in Joke Jakarta. All right. What's going on in Joke Jakarta? We've got an air group there that's training, or we should, and I have evidently moved that out. Yes, we did. We've transferred that to Tajilajap. 
and let's go look at Tijilajap. This should be the 2920, and there it is at Tijilajap. It is training, it is training for naval search. Excellent. We will turn that yellow. Again, turning yellow because if the Japanese get within, I generally say within 15 hexes, uh, we will need to go look at all of the yellow items. In other words, all of our aircraft that are training at Java, uh, we will need to get them active. Uh, at Joke Jakarta, we're also building forts. That's great. We do have an LCU here that costs 16 to buy out. Um, let's take a look at that unit really quickly as I fill in more and see what that unit's all about here at Jokjarda. Oh, this is the base force. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, that's what that was. This would cost 16. I mean, there's no re real reason to buy this out. Now, there is no garrison requirement. Uh, Jokjarda does have 20 light industry, 20 resources, 3 manpower. So it's got a little bit going on here. Um, you know, we could take that base force and send it over here. Does it have a, any aviation support? It does. It has six, and we don't have any planes here. I'm going to keep that green um, because we wouldn't even have to buy it out, obviously, to run it up to Tajilajap, where Tajilajap is where I like to fall back with my planes. Uh, I like to keep my planes very congregated. The reason being is, is if you do have bombers on an island, you want to make sure you've got a lot of fighters there because you don't want those bombers uh, destroyed on the runway, right? And so let's say the Japanese, you know, send a bomber force down to, uh, I don't know, to Jilajap. Let's just say that. Well, right now at Tajilajap, we've got two squadrons of bombers. Uh, you know, let's say that the cap doesn't get up from Batavia or whatever. These guys are just sitting ducks, right? If the Japanese bomb... Um, We've got no cap here, not really. We've got cap close. Uh, we maybe, nope, we don't have any cap here either. Eventually, as the Japanese get close, I'll take these bombers, these bombers, and I'll go hide them uh, behind the really strong cap at Batavia or Swerbaya, those two places. That's where I'll end up uh, congregating all of my planes. That's just how I do. Um... Yeah, Bayard, that's right. Yeah, the Bettys and the Nels have a range, you know, the normal range uh, within 15. And so, you know, that's just kind of a rough guesstimate. Obviously, if they're if the Japanese get like here, I probably won't be counting out or even here. I probably won't be counting out the hexes. I'll just say, shit, we got to start scrambling some of these things and getting them in the air. Um, so anyway, uh, right now, nothing to be done uh, with some of these air units that are you know, here at Bandawang and at Tajilajap, what I may do is move some air support here and actually bring one squadron of the fighters here, uh, just so I do have a little bit more cap, like directly over Tajilajap, because uh, worst case scenarios, I do like to bring uh, fighters here. It's on the back side of the, you know, look, it's only a few hexes from the front side. I guess maybe a little bit of it is a mental trickery, like, oh, I'm on the back side of this island behind a mountain. You can't see me. Well, of course, that doesn't really matter, uh, but I do bring them here quite often um, and, and fly them out of here. Now, Tajilajap can get all the way up to a level seven, and uh, maybe I should, let's expand that airfield. Uh, now that I've said that, uh, that just made me think. Let's expand that airfield just in case. Uh, the next one is Kalajchi. Or, gosh, darn it. I thought I was going to get that one right. Khalid Jati. Kalajati. Okay. Um, Kalajati, where are you? So I played this game so many times that a lot of times these names will sound so familiar. And then when I see them, I'm like, oh my gosh, obviously that was Kalajati. There we go. Yeah, of course. Sitting right here on the coast. Uh, so here at Kalajati, we're building forts. Uh, we've got a base force. We're not moving them. We're not doing anything with that. Those can be red. Now, again, it doesn't have a garrison requirement. I always like to go check the aviation support on these because with the Dutch, and especially in Java, you need all the aviation support you can get at uh, Batavian Swerbaya because you're bringing all of your planes there. Uh, initially, and then, like I just said, uh, eventually maybe some Tajilajap. Uh, but, you know, looking at this base force, you're like, well, it's got six aviation support. We do want to put up some resistance if the Japanese do land here. Now, the base force isn't going to put up a lot, 
obviously it's got a zero assault strength, but at least there's something there. You know what I mean? It's not just completely barren. Um, okay, the next one's the Java, uh, the CL Java, so the light cruiser. Well, we already looked at that task force. That's all good. Uh, it says, wait for more ships. <laughs> yeah, uh, good one, Cole. Yes, we will wait for more ships. Uh, we may actually put those two surface ship groups together. I mean, why not? They're, they're not, you know, doing anything. E even question while they're sitting here at Batavia, why we don't have the destroyers running anti-sub stuff here. Uh, so why don't we actually disband and disband and go up here with our destroyers and do some ASW. Just, we'll have to remember, you know, this is the kind of thing I should be taking notes on, but I'm going to rely on you guys to tell me because I'm sure you're you're sitting there with your notepad. Uh, ASW Batavia. All right. For these guys. And let's have them do a quick little patrol zone to the north. I just want to protect this straight. And you do get a lot of Japanese sub activity that starts coming down here. So why don't we protect with these guys this kind of run into Palembang here. Uh, one... We'll bring them all the way over here to, let's see, they've only got 62, although they should, you know, if I bring them back here, they should be able to do about two rounds. Yeah, 16, oh, that's going to be a little bit more than that, isn't it? Uh, 32, 64, oh, okay. Let's cut one hex off that, and that should allow it to do four full rounds. Okay, I'm no mathematician, but I think that gets it around that uh, it gets that around four times on that patrol before it absolutely needs fuel. Oh, I should set uh, before Bayard yells at me. I got to set this max react. Let's just do two because it doesn't have you know a ton of fuel out here. I got to stop saying ton. That's one of my favorite describers, and in this game, it means a little bit more than it would in normal parlance. Uh, the Wit DeWitt and the Everton. Okay, we will do ASW Batavia for these guys as well. We'll run those a little farther east. Uh, let's set up our patrol zone. Set boundary one. Let's run them. How about right here? For one, let's set boundary two, like right here. And then we'll set boundary three. Eh, actually, we'll just have them go right back and forth in this straight. So right click on that. We've got what we want. Let's go with max reactive two, 16. Uh, it's 11 to get out to it. Shit. Uh, let's, why would, gosh darn it. It's because it's, you know, a little further away here. Um, okay, let's do the patrol zone one short of that and really have it in this straight, okay? So it should be able to detect quite a, you know, anything trying to get through there. Well, unfortunately it's only a level two, so probably not, uh, but we give it a chance. All right, yeah, this is good. Okay, now that should be fine. All right, so that does that, and then we've got, okay, so we've got two groups of destroyers going out there. Now we two have our two CLs here, just for fun, I'll do a surface combat uh, group with both of them, just so I remember that they're here. Uh, I'm not going to give them any orders. I just want to make sure that you know we remember them because we have them in a task force. Uh, we do have that submarine tender here at Batavia before we leave Batavia. We also have this uh, gunboat patrol tender. Uh, this may be better served out at Billiton. How many? That's a four victory point boat. Okay. Uh, and then we have one troop transport here. It's a crappy little one, uh, the kind that you just put along to uh, meet the transport requirement for the number of units you're sending. Uh, okay, but that should be fine for the Java, all of our capital ships uh, out here for the Dutch. That should be good. Uh, the next place we go is Lomanjang. Lomanjang. It looks like we've moved quite a bit of the stuff there at Lomanjang, so let's go look. Uh, red for the early parts of that, the base, the resources, I turn all that stuff red. 
so we don't have to look at it again. And then on to Lomanjang. We'll have to search for that one. JKL. Starts with an O. Okay. Um, there we are. Lomanjang. Oh, okay. It's this little base right here. It's got a base force. Uh, we strap moved the 6th Regiment out to Semarang. Okay, or over to Semarang, I should say. Uh, Semarang, Semarang, Semarang. Oh, there's Semarang. Um, and did it make it? It did. Okay, we're going to move that off strategic mode, put it to combat mode. It's got its objective. That's great. Uh, that would cost 151 to buy out. Seems a little expensive to me for a 51 assault strength uh, Dutch unit. Uh, so we're going to turn this orange. We are likely not to move that. And, you know, it will sit here at Semarang, kind of trying to dissuade the Japanese from landing there. Okay. Um, then we had the base force. Now, Cole put in the spreadsheet, optional airlift to Bima and build uh, an air station there, an airfield for midpoint airlift between Swarbaya and Kopeng. That's actually not a bad idea. So he's talking about right here. All right, so we've got this base here. They're, you know, at Loma Jang, it's close enough to Swarbaya. There's not a real need for it here necessarily. It does have a decent size airfield, but uh, it's more utility to have it down here at Bima and build up this airfield so you can hop from here to here to here all the way down to Darwin. If you're dealing with planes that only have like a six seven or eight maximum range uh it's nice um yeah bayard you're right the potential av on that one is pretty nice uh once we release i he bayard's talking about the sixth the sixth regiment here uh if we release the dutch uh re you know the refit i call it refit because i'm used to calling it that in war of the east the reinforcements um so if we do release those, and we will, as the Japanese start to get down here, uh, we may turn that on, maybe, you know, really this, again, is just to have a force here so the Japanese don't have a good place along the coast to land, a good base that's completely unguarded. Uh, you know, this, there's a long stretch of land here from Batavia to Swarbaya. If you're a Japanese player, at least if I was, I would look here and I would look here, take one of these smaller bases, and then turn north or turn south. At least that's how I would do it. Uh, whether the AI would do it that way is a whole other question. Now we, so we really have to decide, do we want to eventually take this down to Bima? Do we have anything at Bima? What's going on at Bima? Oh yeah, we've got the float uh, tender here. Um, it's the uh, patrol aircraft tender. So we had thought about uh, making a base here or, you know, building out a float plane base. If we're going to do that, we might as well move these guys. Well, we would have to airlift them out. Now, do we have anything? Uh, yeah, we've got some planes here. These guys are training. Uh, interesting. What's their range? Eh, they don't have a great range. Really, they don't even have a good range. Uh, now, the ones that do have a good range... Unfortunately, we've got having to do search. This is quite a search radius out here. Uh, wait a minute. Is this training? No, it's not training. Why are you not showing me the arc? Oh, it's a random arc. Got it. I was like, where in the world are my lines? I love the lines. Uh, it's a random arc that it's flying here. Um, what about these guys? What are they doing? Oh, they're training. Uh, these are not the best kind of planes to be picking up troops, but... Let's try it. Uh, troop transport. For some reason, my game has been doing this. You can't go right to uh, pick up troops. Uh, first of all, i got to get off that. I've got to hit on troop transport, and then eventually pick up troops will uh, you know, come here. So hold on. Let's exit here and see if it does pop up this time. No. Well, maybe with this type of plane, that's interesting. Maybe generally with your patrol planes, you can pick up troops, but this does not be moving troops around in. Hmm. Well, I just wonder if it's that same problem. 
Uh, sh 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 select destination. Let's let's put a destination of Bima here, and then let's try. Yep, now now I can pick up troops. That's so weird. I don't know why it's not showing me that arrow right away. But we've picked our destination of Bima. All right. Um, but what we really want to do is pick up troops. Now let's pick our destination, actually. I guess you do have to do that first. Let's do it to Loman. Has it just been a little while since I played the game and you have to pick your destination first and then it'll allow you to pick up troops? It just kind of seems backwards to me that you would have to pick that and then it opens up pick up troops. But maybe they don't want you to get um, confused here. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let's then say, if we're going to Lomanjang, now see it's still showing, oh, okay, pick up troops, Lomanjang. There we go, to the base force. Okay, pick up from there, all right. Uh, but man, this is gonna take it back to Swarbaya, and then we're gonna have to trans, well, why don't we do this? Why don't we go down, transfer these guys? How many planes are in here? Three. All right, so I guess the best way to do this, now that I confused myself earlier, is to actually put these planes down in Lomanjang. So we transfer them down there. We hit troop transport. transport. Uh, so we're transporting the base force. Now let's select the destination to FEMA. Whew, I made that a little more... Um, Yeah, it's a quirk of the AI of Bayard. <laughs> You're right, I know, an hour is up. Like, what in the world? Well, it is Friday. Let's keep going. Let's go a little longer. Why not? I do have to check the stock market, if you guys don't mind. I wouldn't mind looking at the stock market for a second. Um, let you know what I do in my free time. Uh, okay, so let's see. All right, that's good. That's good. Uh, that actually works out better. I, I was a little confused. I hate how you cannot give on add-on orders. In other words, like fly here, pick them up, take them there. But that's fine. We can just transport to the base. Uh, the other way that you would have to do it would have been to transport them, or transfer, I should say, the squadron down to Bima and then do a troop pickup. But we can't do that because Bima does not even have an airfield, right? Well... Are they going to be able to, well, you know what, it, they're float planes, they're fine. Okay, they'll be fine. Um, we will get back to that next turn and see if this actually worked. My mad plan. Uh, let's see. All right, let's move on here. Okay, so we've air, or we are airlifting. Obviously, we'll leave that green. Uh, we're going to keep on keeping on there. Now we go to Maduin. Uh, Maduin. Maduin, Madowin, Madowin. I guess there's no J in there. It looked like a J on my screen. It's M A D I O E. Ed, that is hitting all the vowels there. Madowin, Madowin. Okay, I like that. Uh, we transferred the first group of these Hawk planes up to Batavia. What number are they? 2910. I think I saw 2910 before. Oh, okay. These are the 75A7 Hawks. They're fighters. 12 of them. Very nice. Very nice. Um, great. Okay. Now we've got them training. We definitely will need to get these up in the air. This is our cap or, you know, part of our cap down here. We've got these fighters and we have another group of B339Ds. 12 of those. So not the worst thing in the world to have, you know, 24 fighters at Batavia. Uh, let me look at Batavian air support. Okay, we got plenty. Oh, great. Okay, uh, looking good there. So, we will turn both of those yellow. We will get them up in the air just as soon as we see those the Japanese appear over the horizon. Uh, so, we were dealing with Madawin, but everything we transferred out either to Batavia or Swerbaya. We have another group of planes that we put in Swerbaya. Uh, that is the 2924 squadron. Let's see if we can find them. There they are. Oh, these are transport planes. Well, shit fire. Uh, why didn't I go stick these down there and take the Batavia force? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, and then I'll, I'll move those uh, patrol planes back. 
All right, so now they're down here. I mean, we've got transport planes available. Why am I doing that? It makes no sense. Um, let's actually turn them back to training. And we'll do, we'll turn them back to training. Oh, not naval attack, naval search. Uh, we'll jack that down to zero. They're training. Now we'll have them transport our troops. Uh, troop transport the base force and let's have them go down to Bima. Uh, oh, <laughs> wow, this has been a great learning session uh, for how to transport troops around. Yes, you're exactly right, Bayard. We cannot take the transports down there. I had just said that. Okay, so for any of you that are kind of new to the game and maybe slightly confused as I mutter to myself, what happened here is We've got these float planes, okay? And they can get into places like Bima, right? Because they can land on the water. They don't need an airfield. Um, gosh darn it, I can't believe I did that. That was, that was funny. Um, they have got, you know, they can, they can land on the water. So they can transport, transport something down to a place like Bima. So what I saw when I went to Swarbaya there was, well, I've got actual transport planes. Why am I using float planes to go down to Bima? Uh, when I, you know, have all these transport planes that, you know, can carry more, they're bigger planes, they're better for the, for the operation that we're running here. Well, the reason, of course, that I can't do that is there is no airfield at Bima. So those big transport planes cannot get down in there. If we go look at Bima again, I showed you that before, airfield zero. So I could not take the transport planes there Eh, whatever. All that ended up happening is I just transferred them over to this base. We will want to get them back up to Swarbaya. Uh, you know, we, can, we can't transfer more than once in a turn. Uh, so next turn, we will need to get them up to Swarbaya. We will turn this, you know, back to training, transport 100, uh, because we want them to be protected by cap. We may eventually use those transport planes over here, just across the Java Sea to take these units and bring them over to Swarbaya. Um, that's right, Stanley. That is why float planes are good. Uh, float planes. It always makes me think of Fantasy Island uh, when I think of float planes. If you remember that show, the plane, the plane, and then, you know, the float plane lands out in the water. Okay, let's see. Where were we here? Uh, yep, okay. So transfer to Swarbaya, pick up the troops from Pamukkazen. So that's what he wanted us to do with the this transport group. Um, Pamukkazen is here. Right. Okay, so, you know, this is out on a little island. It's hard to tell because the task force is there, but there is water there. So this is a little island. So we have this uh, base or this infantry group out here. Uh, the Berezian or Berezian uh, regiment, the infantry unit out here, uh, 24, not bad. Um, and so that's what we're supposed to be using our transport planes for to bring them over here to Swarbaya. We'll do that next time. I'm actually going to leave myself a note there. Uh, turn that green. Another thing we're supposed to do with those transport planes per the spreadsheet, if that's what we're going to do, is add... And it looks like we did add uh, planes. We added six planes, uh, six aircraft. Perfect. Okay, so we have done that in the past. But I'm going to add my, a little note here. Transfer back to Surabaya. Because I know when we go back to Java next time, I'm going to say, where the hell are those transports? I cannot find them um, if I don't leave myself a note. Transfer back to Swear. Okay, uh, Madawin, nothing else really going on there. Uh, we have some resources, some manpower, the airfield, that's fine. None of that stuff's moving. Uh, great. Uh, then we have the base force there. We did turn the replacements on. We'll just turn that orange. We could move it if we needed to, uh, but probably not. Uh, then we move on to Malang. And in Malang, we transferred some some of those uh, 139s over to uh, Swerbaya. There we go. And that is 2904, Squadron 2904. And there they are. They are running ASW for us, 03100 on the coordinates. 
that all looks correct. We're running at 50%. Uh, that's all great. Okay, perfect. Uh, we can turn those orange. That probably won't change unless the Japanese show up. Uh, Malang, nothing else really going on there. And then we get to Mataram. What is happening at Mataram? Well, we sent uh, a base for our base force at Mataram. We are sending that to Morocco. That reminds me. All right, let's go down here and find Mataram. Mataram, is this Mataram? I think it is. Yes, it is. Uh, this base force we want to send. You can see it right here. Maruk, Maroc. I call it Maroc, and then it sounds like Iraq. Uh, I'm going to call it Maruk. Sure, why not? Um, so we are going to do Maruk. We got we've got our transport down here. Great. Uh, let's make sure we can load this on. What's our load cost? Oh, our load cost is essentially nothing. Good lord, this is a really thin unit. There is not much going on there. Uh, okay, whatever. Uh, this is the cargo. Oh, this is cargo Mataram that we sent down here. But we've got APs. Where did these guys come out of? They are amphibious landing. We had to have set them up for this reason. Uh, dock. Let's load troops. We do not have troops currently in strategic move mode. Let's load troops. Okay. Now let's think here for a minute. This is an amphibious task force. It's not allowing us to load that. Uh, we did dock it, which I'm... I think those guys are just going to have to pack up. Uh, it's not showing for it. Oh, I think we maybe do we have to leave them in combat mode to go do an amphibious landing. Uh, load troops. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, the troop transport. I'll come back to that one. I'm not going to sit here. And, oh, there we go. I have not released this yet. Okay. <laughs> It's always something like that, like you haven't released it yet. Uh, we're going to release to ABDA. I actually think that's near the bottom. HQ. Where's ABDA? So we're going to have to pay four points to release this out. Let's go all the way to the top. West Coast, no. North uh, Pacific, nope. South Pacific, nope. Southwest Pacific. I think it's under the Malayan Command, ABDA. I just can't remember. Oh, it's under, it's the big, it's the big command, the Far East Command, the ABDA. And we're going to do that. Done. It was only three points. We will do that. Now we can load them on the, tra the transports. Uh, if ever you can't see troops that you think should be able to load up, it's because you have not paid for them yet. Um, Azutex says AU is pronounced like ow, as in cow, like cow, ow, marauk, marauk. Close? Is that good? And yes, yes, Bayard, they do have to be in combat mode. Uh, by the way, if you did not have this in combat mode, it would be tell you that and you could click on it it would say it's not ready to load uh, our problem and it, the problem will always be if you go someplace and you're like I know I should be able to load those troops why can I not generally it's because of a command restriction uh, an old war horse like me should know that here we go loading unit let's verify that load let's accept it and let's get them moving down here to Beautiful Marauk. Marauk. Okay. Close. <laughs> Zutex says close. Uh, I think that you're probably just being kind. Now, okay. So they can get down there. Let's actually, okay. So they can get there. Let's set their home port to Darwin. Uh, so that destroyer can go with them the whole way. I do not like sailing a lot of stuff right in here. Uh, this is just prime Japanese uh, territory there. Uh, refuel. Well, let's see. Does Bima have... Not Bima. 
does uh, Mataram have any fuel? They've only got 50 fuel. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to have them go there and then go to Darwin uh, to refuel. Works for me. Um, let's see. Oh, let's go back here. All right. So we'll get a, another base force down to Marauk. Azutek, I hope that's right. Uh, we have now done that. That is going green. Uh, then we have this garrison battalion, a uh, base force. Okay, this is all... Oh, at Mataram, we have that uh, garrison battalion. Okay, it's called a garrison battalion, but we do not have a garrison requirement. But to get it off this island is going to cost 50 points for 30 assault strength. Eh, it's something we'll think about. Uh, we'll keep that green for now. Uh, we then go on to Merak, M-E-R-A-K. Where is Merak? Let's go check it out. L-M. Merak, all right. Oh, it's right on the southern tip here? Or the northern, oh, that's right. Merak is right here, just north of Batavia, right on the strait here. Probably amazing views from there. Uh, the base force build forts, all right. Sounds good. We're doing that. Uh, the engineer force would cost 16 to buy out, uh, but we want to build up these forts as fast as we can at Merak, so that's cool. We'll keep that orange. Um, we did a su support task force, uh, an ammunition one, the Canopus, that went around to Tajilajap. I do believe we saw that when I was flipping around here. Or did I? Where is that? Let's go back up here for a second. Let's see what we've got here, the AMC. Uh, we have these two destroyers here. Uh, this is a fuel test. Now this is interesting. These are more of those really good... Nope, they're not. They're the two destroyers. That's right. That's why I left these guys here because they're only... Well, that guy's an eight. All right, we're breaking up this task force and I'm gonna put this eight out here. We're really gonna to try to capture as much of this Japanese sub activity as we can right out here. But with that, I think I'm gonna call it a day. Uh, unfortunately, work calls, that's never fun. I'd rather hang out and play the game all day with you guys. Uh, the next time I see you will be, well, if you're tuning in for War in the East, we will continue with our uh, turn one setup tomorrow, uh, Saturday at 10 a.m. If not, and you just like the Pacific War, uh, we will be back Sunday at 10 a.m. I will continue setting up the whole board so that on Sunday, as we like to do, we will resolve turn seven and all watch it together. Thank you, Bayard. I'll see you later. P. Warner, um, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, always, always like to see you. Uh, Azutek, thank you for helping with my pronunciations. Stanley, you're a peach. Have a good one, buddy. Uh, so you guys have a great weekend. Uh, if I don't see you tomorrow, I'll see you Sunday, and we'll talk it through. As always, Strategy Gaming Dojo, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Have a good one, guys.